Uh, today we're going to make the fondant or the pinoche or both that go inside uh, caramel rolls. These can obviously also be used to make chocolates and I do both with both of them actually. Um, we have some already made that we'll talk about in just a minute. Again, you need a heavy pan. I use this as an old, old pressure cooker that's uh, probably 70 or 80 years old at this point. But it's aluminum and it's a really good heavy pan to use. Uh, the recipe that I'm going to use for the creamy fondant, and the creamy is important. You can find recipes you can Google recipes, but if you don't put the creamy fondant, you get the cake frosting fondant rather than the candy fondant. And they're quite different. The fondant recipe, or the pinot recipe that we're going to explain as well, is one that my mother used. I have no idea where she got the recipe. There are also pinot recipes online, and if you just Google pinot, you can get lots of them. I use these because they're relatively simple and uh, don't call for a lot of real expertise in candy making. One of the important things is if you will put your liquids in first and then the sugar, that helps in the long run to keep them from sugaring. I've uh, put both the milk and the cream together here. The recipe calls for a cup of cream and a half a cup of milk. So we've put both of the cream and the milk in here now. The other kind of liquid ingredient is some caro. The recipe calls for half a cup of caro. And now that we've got the kind of liquid ingredients in the pan, we put the others. And the only other ingredients are a little bit of salt. I think it calls for a quarter teaspoon. I like a little bit more, but not a lot and four and a half cups of sugar. If you're a professional candy maker, you probably want to invest in a good um, candy thermometer. And by good, I don't mean one that you can buy for $3 at the grocery store. You, you need to find a professional thermometer or not use one. I have always just not used one so I didn't want to spend the money for the professional one and it seems like no matter how you stir it, it's always in the way, etc, etc, etc. So I've got everything in here. It's going to start to boil in just a minute and when you're making candy you can do almost anything to it as long as it's boiling. Once it quits boiling after you've cooked it and you stir it or bump it or whatever, it is almost 99% likely to sugar. I've got this on high. And even then it takes a while. As you can see here, this is now boiling. It's taken us about six minutes to get this far. Some recipes tell you to um, boil it on a, a lower heat. It will be whiter if you cook it faster and it will caramelize more if you cook it slower. Uh, I'm nearly always in a hurry, so I don't wait for it to caramelize. But this is at the point that it's starting to thicken a little bit, as you can see it drip off the spoon here. And using a cold water test, rather than the 228 degrees that softball is supposed to be, except at higher levels than sea level, and I've never stopped to figure out what it needs to be. We're about 5,000 feet here, so anyway, um, this is getting close, and all you need to do with a water test is put some cold water in a little bowl and drip some of this in, and I, this shouldn't be quite ready yet. As you can see, it just kind of scatters around, and you're going to try to make a ball out of it with your fingers, and it, it just isn't quite there. It's just still pretty runny. So I'll dump this out. You can almost tell by the way um, it cooks down. As you notice, it's not nearly as voluminous now as it was a minute ago. So we're getting pretty close to softball. I think I already said that you can stir or do anything to this as long as it's boiling. 
Once it quits boiling, you don't want to move it or bump it or jiggle it because it tends to sugar that way. The reason I'm using a wooden spoon is that the wooden spoon doesn't form crystals as readily as a metal one does. If you stir it with a metal one, at least along the sides, it will probably get um, make it quite sugary. So we we'll dip this in here again. As you can see this time, it doesn't spread all over and I can pick it up. I'm just dripping water all over the place there. I can pick it up with my fingers. Usually I can. So that it looks about like that. If you put it on the counter, it'll stay in kind of a little ball. So now that we've got it this far, you need to cool it. Okay, we've got this fondant cooled now. You'll notice that it's pretty thick. I still got my wooden paddle. I never took it out. The way I test it is just to stick my finger in and if it doesn't burn, then it's ready. Um, I've had mine in cold water, so you can feel the sides of the pan and know that it's not hot. It's just warm to the touch at this point. And this is where the fun begins. Um, Pauline Atkinson says to put the flavorings in at the end of the stirring process, but I've found that it doesn't make a bit of difference whether you put them in now or whether you put them at the end. If I'm going to add nuts or candies or something like that to my fondant, I put the nuts in at the very end, but you can put the flavorings in uh, whenever you want to, any, any time in the process. It doesn't seem to, stirring process, it doesn't seem to matter. Um, as far as colors go, I found that the, the cheapo colors and the little bit more expensive paste work about the same way. I prefer the paste. They do dry out over time, but uh, and they're a little bit more pricey, but not a whole lot. As far as the flavorings go, most use these little Loran um, flavorings. They're oils, and in a lot of cases, I don't care for them. They give the flavors are not true, and. I, a lot of times, just use regular McCormick's or whatever flavor the regular grocery store is selling. The butter rum, and the mint, the orange, the lemon. I like all of those flavors better. These are shilling, McCormick, excuse me, uh, than the oils. But it just depends on the taste that you like and use what you want. As far as the paste, um, colors are concerned, what I usually do is I just stick my my uh, pick in, stir in a little bit of time. A little goes a long ways, so you don't need much. It can take up to half an hour to stir it. I have a daughter who has watched me stir this forever and ever, and she says, I want to make candy, but I'm not going to spend my life stirring fondant. So she beats hers with her uh, regular beater, and it works just fine as far as she's concerned. I think it changes the texture a little bit, but for her, it was just fine. Notice how this is just streaming down from the spoon into the pot I'm holding down below. <clears throat> and as long as it streams down there, it's not done. When, it, when we get through stirring it in 10 or 20 minutes, however long it takes, this stream will break right in the middle and that's when it's done. And then you pour it into, I've got a buttered bowl here that I sprayed with just regular spray. Notice that I have my wooden spoon with a fairly good sized end on it because that uh, gets me more of the fondant into the air and all you're doing here is incorporating air into the liquid that you've got. It will turn up opaque eventually and it will just before it sets up the way you want it to it will get quite easy to stir. I don't know what why it does that but this is not hard, it just takes a while. You watch your favorite TV show while you stir the candy. 
this is probably going to set up a whole lot sooner than I told you because it's already starting you can see it's it's more opaque than it was when we started the wooden spoon helps me get down in the corners around the sides of the pan you don't need to worry too much about getting every little drop off the sides of the pan stirred in it uh, changes enough as you stir it you don't have to scrape it ever I like this kind of a pan because it has a handle that I can hang on to and that makes it a whole lot easier to, to stir. It reminds me of ribbon candy when it falls back into the, into the pan. Stirring for about 10 minutes and now see instead of streaming back into the pan it actually breaks. And it's ready to transfer. to my grease bowl. If you wanted food coloring and flavor in this, you would have just yeah. put it in when it was still I can put soft. it in at any time. Uh, this is, see how hard it is already? I would have put the nuts in um, if I'm using nuts or, or coconut a little bit before it got this stiff. That's all there is to it. I'll use this for centers for chocolates or I can make it into rolls and use it in my nut rolls. Either way. If I'm putting it in nut rolls I nearly always just use vanilla flavoring. If I'm making chocolates I do lemon and coconut and almond joys and rum and whatever orange and lemon and lime. So that last couple of minutes it firms up super fast. Right, in the last couple of minutes as soon as it starts to break you start running for it. So just take a quart size bag again it's soft enough that I can mold it with my hands. Stick it in the bag. One bag will usually, it's pretty tight, but you can usually get all of it in one quart sized Ziploc. Then when I get ready to dip my chocolates, then I just roll it like that, and then their centers are ready to dip. Broken off, it's almost like popcorn, but it'll smush right back in, be just fine. Now that I've got it all stirred and taken out of the pan. I just put it in a, this is a quart sized Ziploc bag. Put it in the fridge. can store for weeks until I get ready to use it to make candies. Um, then I put it in a plastic bag. Put it in the fridge. You don't have to freeze it. You can freeze it if you'd like to. And it will keep two, three months if you need to. I don't, it doesn't usually hang around that long at my house, but it's fairly uh, safe to keep it. There's nothing to spoil. Now, this is a little bit stiffer than I want it for my rolls. This is Pinoche. And when it gets that stiff, all you have to do is just knead it a little bit with your hands. Just knead it like it's bread dough and see it, it softens right up and you can use it. Um, another video out there that we did shows you how to turn this into a nut roll. You just, uh, I've got more here than I need in the middle of a nut roll so I'm going to take that much off and roll this again. 
And this is the panoche. Um, I have two recipes that I use primarily for my nut rolls. The one is the panoche and the other is the creamy fondant that we're in the process of making. So now that it's ready to go, I don't have to do anything more to it except just use it in my candy roll. Anyway, notice that this is much more sticky than the panoche was. And if I were to knead this and make it into rolls, it would be all over my hand. So what you do, you can use either powdered sugar or corn, corn starch. This is corn starch. This is corn starch. And just get enough on your hands that, that it doesn't stick to your hands. And see now I can, I can take it and do whatever I want to. Otherwise it would have just been so sticky that it would be all over me. So again, just roll it out. I'll get a piece of wax paper here to roll it on. Get a little bit more cornstarch on my hand because I can feel it starting to stick to me. And again, it's just the same way. Now, if I were going to uh, make chocolates out of this, I'd do it a little bit differently. I didn't get a teaspoon over here, but I get a piece about that big, put it on a piece of parchment paper and let it sit for an hour or two. And then I can roll it into a center for a chocolate and then go ahead and dip it in the chocolates, which chocolate, melted chocolate, which is a whole nother process. Let me show you just a little bit about the difference in the texture. This is the creamy fondant. This is exactly the way I want it for my chocolates. I don't want it too stuff. And this is a little bit more firm. Both of them are completely usable as long as you know to, see this is starting to stick with my hands on my hands, so if I, I put the cornstarch on the hand, then it quits sticking. And a little bit of cornstarch or a little bit of powdered sugar isn't gonna hurt it at all.